It's the most powerful show on television. High drama with intense energy. A show dedicated to a few brave souls who risk their lives for the sake of their craft. Its in-depth reporting goes to the core and unlocks the mysteries behind today's raciest sport. Motorsports, catch it when you can. The Speed Station welcomes you to Richmond Raceway for the running of the Toyota Owners 400. In the race analysis, today's event is 160 laps, stage 1 ends on lap 40, and stage 2 ends on lap 80. Defending champion Clint Boyer wins the pole above his teammate Kevin Harvick, then Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, Daniel Suarez, Cole Custer, Eric Gamarola, Matt DiBenedetto, Joey Logano, and Chase Elliott round out the top 10. And there's the green flag at Richmond. Clint Boyer getting a very good jump on the start over his teammate Harvick. Already Truex to the inside of Harvick in the battle for second. Three wide around mid-pack. I saw Chase Elliott up on the outside. There was a little bit of contact near the back of the field between the 47 and 12 of Stenhouse and Blaney. And at the start-finish line, Clint Boyer will lead lap one. Martin Truex Jr. drives up to second. Now another Gibbs car to the inside of the four, that being Kyle Busch as the 18 will move up into third. Daniel Suarez now on the inside of the four car of Harvick, trying to take up fourth spot, getting around the four car. Exiting turn four on lap three, the double zero car of Suarez has taken up fourth. Now Stuart Haas teammates Cole Custer and Kevin Harvick battle for fifth. Clint Boyer just starting to check out on the 19 car of Martin Truex Jr., the gap between first and second. Is already out to about one second as here comes Kyle Busch to the inside of teammate Truex. At the start finish line it will be Kyle Busch to move up into second as Cole Custer has taken up fifth in the 41. And take a look at Jimmy Johnson on the inside of Kevin Harvick trying to move his way up into eighth and he has got the position. The 21 car of Matt Benedetto went three wide on the exit of turn four. That moves that 21 car up into the top ten. Tyler Ankrum rapidly falling back from the start of the race, qualified around 12th position and has already dropped to around 31st. We got a three-man battle for fifth position with Brad Keselowski right on the back bumper of the 41 of Cole Custer and Jimmy Johnson behind him. Already Kevin Harvick has fallen down to 10th position after being passed by the 21 of Benedetto, which moves the 21 up into 9th. Now Daniel Suarez has closed up to the back bumper of the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. going for third position. Clint Boyer still putting time on second spot Kyle Busch. The gap between first and second is out to 1.3 seconds. Here comes Joey Logano on the inside of Jimmy Johnson. That will move the 22 car up into seventh. Johnson being shuffled out of line. Looks like he will get back down to the inside line, clearing the 21 into turn three. Kyle Busch starting to close the gap to Boyer. The gap between first and second has been cut down to nine tenths. Here comes De Benedetto on the inside of Jimmy Johnson entering turn three. That will move the 21 up into eighth spot. Take a look at who is running in 30th position right now. That's the 12 car of Ryan Blaney, the point leader entering today's race. Not having a very good run and already has right side damage after getting into the wall on the exit of turn two. Here comes Cole Custer to the inside of Daniel Suarez. Looks like rookie Custer will move up into fourth position. Man, almost contact between the Penske teammates of Keselowski and Logano as the two car of Brad Keselowski will move up into fifth. Daniel Suarez rapidly falling back spots, being trapped up on the outside. Now three wide with Jimmy Johnson on the inside. The 21 car gets loose off four. Still Johnson trying to make it stick on the bottom. That will move the 48 up into seventh. Kyle Busch starting to get within half a second of the 14 car of Boyer. Looks like it will not be easy sailing for Boyer to get to the end of the first stage. And Brad Keselowski has driven his way up into fourth spot. Joey Logano will follow suit on the inside of the 41 to take up fifth. We are now halfway through stage one. Take a look at the gap between first and second. It has been cut down only four tenths, separating the 14 and 18. Jimmy Johnson still battling alongside the 41 car of Custer. That will move Johnson up into sixth position. And Kevin Harvick starting to creep his way back up towards the front as he currently runs in ninth spot. Brad Keselowski starting to make ground on the 19 car of Martin Truex Jr. Looks like soon we will have a battle for third spot 
as Kyle Busch has gotten within two tenths of race leader Clint Boyer. And the caution flag is out. In the race back to the flag, it was Clint Boyer above Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski, and Joey Logano. So entering turn one, John Hunter Nemechek makes contact with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., spinning the 47 coming off turn two, but then point leader Ryan Blaney gets involved, slamming the outside wall, being spun by Chase Elliott down onto the apron. Then the 37 car of Ryan Priest checks up right in front of Ankrum, causing heavy front end damage on the 23. Then tries to cut down to pit road, gets spun out by the 20 and 95. Also slight cosmetic damage on the 81 of Brandon Jones. And the first car off pit road is Clint Boyer getting out in front of Kyle Busch, then Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski, and Joey Logano. And after that incident, the only car out of the race is Phoenix stage winner Tyler Ankrum in the 23. And this is going to be a very big hit for the 12 car of Ryan Blaney in the regular season point standings. As he entered this race as the point leader, second in points was Kevin Harvick. Currently, Blaney runs in 37 two laps down, and Harvick runs in eighth spot. And don't forget about third in points, Clint Boyer, currently the race leader. And I'm not sure what this is about, but Clint Boyer, the race leader, just spun Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the lap car, under caution. Not sure how well that's going to be received. Green flag, just 10 laps to go in stage one. Into turn one, the top four cars clear the lap traffic. With Martin Truex Jr. right on the back bumper of his teammate. Now take a look to the inside into turn three. And Martin Truex Jr. will move up into second spot. And look at this, the lap traffic has caused a bit of a stack up around mid-pack. De Benedetto in the middle, right behind the lap car of Priest. Harvick now diving onto the bottom. Oh boy, almost four wide coming off turn four. Lap car Blaney on the outside, and they still manage to keep it together. Kyle Busch has retaken second off his teammate Martin Truex Jr. And we have about a four-man race for the stage victory with just about... Seven laps to go in stage one. Now here comes Truex back to the inside of Kyle Busch. And the 19 car takes second once again. These two running side by side will let Boyer extend his lead. Still Kyle Busch fighting the 19 car up on the outside line. They've ran side by side like this for about two to three laps. As it looks like finally the 19 car has cleared the 18 off turn two. And now Brad Keselowski is trying to take up third off the 18 car of Kyle Busch. At the start-finish line, he held the position. And he's going to try and dive it into turn one to slide up in front of the 18 on the exit of two. Jimmy Johnson has lost a ton of track position since the restart. Restart in the top ten, currently runs in 27th after being trapped behind some lap cars. Martin Truex Jr. really starting to make some gains on the 14 car of Clint Boyer as we now just have two to go in stage one. And there's the white flag in stage one for Clint Boyer. Martin Truex Jr. right on his back bumper. Truex almost making contact with the 14 as they enter turn three. But it's not going to be enough as Clint Boyer will win stage one at Richmond. Truex in second. Brad Keselowski third. Kyle Busch in fourth. And Joey Logano in fifth. NASCAR on Speed Station is being brought to you by... Built by me, chassis and engine parts. By Smeepy, the real canned meat paste. And by Starton Park, the official motel brand of NASCAR. And the first car off pit road is Clint Boyer getting out in front of Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski, Kyle Larson moving up into fourth, and Eric Almarola moving into fifth. And there's the green flag for stage two. As the field funnels down into turn one, the top four cars once again clear all the lap traffic on the inside. Brad Keselowski right on the back bumper of the 19, now to the inside in turn three. At the start finish line, it is still the 19 car of Truex to hold second. Keselowski will try to dive it into one. Truex still making the outside line work on the two car of Brad Keselowski as they still remain side by side for the second position. And we have a crash, the 43 car on its side. Caution flag is out, Jimmy Johnson is as well involved. In the race back to the flag, 
It is Clint Boyer above Brad Kozlowski who took up second, Martin Schwex Jr. in third, Kyle Larson in fourth, and Kevin Harvick in fifth. Bubba Wallace was having his best run of the season running around 15th position, but four wide coming off turn two does not work as the 88 car makes contact with his teammate Jimmy Johnson, sending the 43 into the wall and upside down on the exit of turn number two. Also, point leader Ryan Blaney involved and will now be out of the race in the 12. We should also mention that before this crash even occurred, the 81 car Brandon Jones had to pit for a flat tire. And we have had a large shakeup up front after the pit stops, with Denny Hamlin taking the lead above Martin Truex Jr., then Kyle Larson, Eric Amarola, and Kevin Harvick, and Clint Boyer, who entered pit road as the leader, gets out in sixth position. The number 89 car of Landon Castle for Shepard Racing Ventures currently runs in 10th spot after getting a great pit stop on the last cycle. Green flag. The lap car of Brandon Jones putting up a bit of a fight up against second spot Martin Truex Jr. That allowed Denny Hamlin to gap second by about half a second already entering turn three. No oh, contact between the 8 and 42, that slid Reddick down into Magnuson, but they managed to gather it back up on the exit of turn number 4. Look at this three-wide battle on the inside. Clint Boyer getting around both Harvick and Larson in the same move. Harvick now stuck behind the lap car of Brandon Jones. He has fallen all the way down to 8th spot. Martin Truex Jr. starting to gain time on Denny Hamlin. The gap between 1st and 2nd is down to 3 tenths. As there you see the 81 car of Jones get up into the outside wall. That's going to let Harvick get around him finally. And take a look at Martin Truex Jr. right on the back bumper of the 11 on the exit of turn number four. Lost a little bit of time, slid on the exit. Now moves Hamlet up off the inside line. The 19 car edges ahead on the exit of turn two. Now going to try and clear Hamlet on the exit of turn four, diving it into three. And Martin Truex Jr. is now your leader at Richmond. And we are now halfway through stage two. The 10 car of Eric Amarola starting to gain ground on second spot, Denny Hamlin. Harvick managed to get around the 57 of Kyle Larson. That moves the 4 car back into 6th. And here comes a move by Kyle Busch to the inside of the 14 of Clint Boyer. The 18 car trying to move up into 4th spot. Into turn 1, Kyle Busch has taken up 4th. Now he has his sights set on the 10 car of Eric Amarola to try to take 3rd. Kevin Harvick now taking advantage of his teammate Boyer being up on the outside line. That will move the four car up into fifth. Denny Hamlin is really not letting his teammate get away with the lead at this point, as the gap between first and second is still within three tenths. And Kyle Busch ran turn three a little bit wide, forced the 10 car out of the inside line, and Kyle Busch has taken up third. That means we have a JGR 1-2-3. The other Joe Gibbs car of Eric Jones, however, currently runs in 27th position, not getting a very good run out of the same equipment. And here comes Kevin Harvick to the inside of Eric Almarola. That will move the four car into fourth. Now just ten laps to go in stage two. The gap between first and second has now been extended out to one second between the 19 and 11. We have quite the battle for fifth spot with Kyle Larson in the 57 taking the position off the 10 car of Eric Almarola. Denny Hamlin got slowed up by the lap car of Ryan Priest on the exit of turn two. That brought his teammate Kyle Busch right up to his back bumper. Now Martin Truex Jr. slightly getting slowed down by the 47 of Stenhouse. Although with just five to go in stage two, it's not going to be enough for Hamlin to make up over a second and a half on Truex. Now here comes Kyle Busch to the inside of his teammate Denny Hamlin using the lap car of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. as a pick. And Kyle Busch will take up second. And Martin Truex Jr. will now see the white flag in stage two with his teammate Kyle Busch about a second and a half behind. And Martin Truex Jr. will win stage two in the 19 car above his teammates, Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. Then in fourth is Kevin Harvick and fifth, Kyle Larson. NASCAR on Speed Station is being brought to you by Built by Me Chassis and Engine Parts. By Smeaty, the real canned meat paste. And by Starting Park, the official motel brand of NASCAR. And the first car off pit road is Martin Truex Jr. getting out in front of Kyle Busch, then Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, and Eric Almarola. Denny Hamlin falling several spots getting off pit road. And there's the green flag for the final stage here at Richmond.
Kyle Busch right on the back bum bumper of race leader Martin Truex Jr. on the exit of turn two. Now Busch to the inside. The 37 gets turned by Denny Hamlin. Caution flag is out, and as we race back to the flag, Kyle Busch has taken the lead. It will be Kyle Busch to lead the field over Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, and in fifth, it was Eric Almarola. Entering turn one, the 37 goes a little bit wide. Denny Hamlin sees a hole. And there's not quite enough room as Hamlin makes contact with the 37, spinning Priest around and into the inside wall. Green flag. Truex gets a pretty good jump on the 18 car of Kyle Busch. Already three wide for around fifth position with lap cars on the inside. And here comes Eric Amarola on the inside of Kyle Larson. This is the battle for fourth position. As you see there, three wide on the inside goes the Team Penske teammates of Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano getting around the JTG teammates there, both one lap down. And now Eric Amarola has moved up into fourth. Oh, Martin Truex Jr. took turn one a little bit wide, let the four car of Kevin Harvick onto his inside, although Truex clears him with a run off of turn two. And look at this, after being trapped on the outside and being blocked by the JTG teammates who are both one lap down, the 14 car of Clint Boyer has already dropped outside the top 25. And your top five is currently Kyle Busch still leading above Martin Truex Jr., then Kevin Harvick, Eric Almarola, and Kyle Larson still resides in fifth, although the Team Penske teammates of Logano and Keselowski are really making good gains on the 57. Brad Keselowski just got around his teammate Logano to move up into sixth position. And after hooking the 37 car of Ryan Priest off turn two, the 11 car of Denny Hamlin has not been nearly as strong. He currently resides in ninth spot, right behind Matt Benedetto in the 21. Here comes Harvick to the inside of Martin Truex Jr. entering turn three. Inching ahead on the exit of turn four. At the start finish line, it will be Harvick to hold second spot. Going to try and dive into turn one, hopefully slide up in front of the 19 on the exit of two. But Truex pinches him down on the exit of the corner, getting the run off the top side. And the yellow flag is out. This is the race back to the caution. As Kyle Busch is your leader at the start finish line, it will still be Truex to hold second. Kevin Harvick in third, Eric Almarola in fourth, and fifth is held by Brad Keselowski, getting it off the 57. The 33 car of Magnuson checks up for the pitting number 34, then Landon Castle makes contact with him on the exit of four. Magnuson saves it after sliding dead sideways off the corner, but contact gets made between the 89 and 8 of Castle and Reddick, spinning Castle around, entering turn one. He manages to keep it off the wall, but this brings out the caution. And yet again, we've had another shuffle off pit road. Kyle Busch still remains your leader, but second spot has been taken by Eric Almarola, then Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, and Kyle Larson. Kevin Harvick falling all the way down to sixth. Green flag. Man, the lap car of Brandon Jones actually got a very good jump on the 18 car of Kyle Busch. Not cutting him any slack as now the 18 car cuts down to the inside line. Second place, Eric Amarola is going to have to fight the 81 for the bottom as he now cuts down to the inside. Look at this, Denny Hamlin going through the middle, still battling with the 37 of Ryan Priest. As the 19 car gets around the 11 car of Denny Hamlin and almost made contact with Priest. And now we got a battle for second, the two car of Brad Keselowski taking the position off the 10 of Eric Amarola. Three wide on the inside goes Ryan Newman. Try and get around the 11 car of Denny Hamlin. Those two are battling for eighth spot. And Newman gets around Hamlin. And remember, Brad Keselowski still has not won a race this year, and if he doesn't win either tonight or at Daytona, he will not make the playoffs this season. Although if he does win, that will displace Jan Magnussen from making it. Jimmy Johnson now starting to climb his way back up into the top 20. Currently runs in 20th on the inside of the eight car of Tyler Reddick moves up into 19th. The gap between first and second is about half a second separating Bush from Keselowski. Then behind them, almost a second and a half, is the 10 car of Amarola being hounded by his teammate Harvick. Keselowski made up three tenths of a second that last lap. Now here comes Harvick to the inside of the 10 car of Amarola. That's the battle for third position. 
and Harvick will easily take it on the exit of turn four. And Joey Logano trying to follow suit with Kevin Harvick. That will move the 22 car up into fourth. Take a look at Keselowski. He is closed up right to the back bumper, the 18 car of Kyle Busch. And these two have quite the history, although mostly from their days in the Xfinity series. And here comes Keselowski. Almost gave the bumper to the 18 car of Kyle Busch entering turn one. Busch still holds the position, although Keselowski's going to have a run into turn three. Tried to make a look onto the inside, but Kyle Busch will get a better exit of turn four and still holds the lead. And take a look at who has driven his way back up into sixth position. That's Matt DiBenedetto in the 21. Spent quite a bit of this race around 25th position, but now challenging Almirola for fifth. Here comes Keselowski back to the back bumper. The 18 got a very good exit of turn two. Now to the inside. Gets right up alongside the 18 car of Kyle Busch. At the start finish line, the 18 car still led that lap. Going to try and dive it into turn one. Still Kyle Busch pinching down the two car, not giving him the momentum on the exit of two. Keselowski tried sliding up in front of the 18. Couldn't quite do it as Keselowski will lead at the stripe. And on the exit of turn two, Brad Keselowski is now your leader at Richmond. Kevin Harvick now starting to get up into this mix within one second of the leader. Kyle Busch is not letting Keselowski run away with the lead, though. At this point, they are still within three-tenths of a second of each other. And right in front of Keselowski is the lap cars of the 47 and 37. Ooh, Keselowski had to cut a hard left to get onto the inside of the 37. Lost a little bit of time on the exit of turn four. And remember, the closer, Kevin Harvick, is within six-tenths of race leader Brad Keselowski. But a more immediate threat to the two cars, the 18, who tries to take a look onto the inside down the front straight. Going to try to dive it into turn one, but Keselowski closes the door on him. Matt DiBenedetto got around the 10 car of Amarola to move up into fifth, and the 19 car also capitalized on the slowing 10 to move up into sixth. Look at this, a three-man battle for the lead with less than 30 to go here at Richmond. Harvick right on the back bumper of the 18 car of Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch really hounding Brad Keselowski as they are within one-tenth of each other on the exit of turn two. Right now it's looking like the 18 car is a little bit better than the two of Keselowski. But Keselowski is not making it easy for the 18 to get momentum coming off the corners. Who Kyle Busch slid it on the exit of turn four, lost a little bit of time to the two. And that will bring the four car of Harvick right back to him. The gap between first to third is within four tenths. A remarkable battle in the closing laps here at Richmond. And in the next few laps, Brad Keselowski is going to have to start dealing with thicker lap traffic with the 2095 and several others right up in front of him. The 18 car of Kyle Busch starting to drop back as the four car of Harvick takes a look to the inside. Ran the corner just a little bit wide. And it looks like Kevin Harvick will take up second. Who Harvick did not get a very good exit of turn two. Brought the 18 car right back up to the outside. But on the exit of turn four, Harvick has finally cleared Kyle Busch. And now with just less than 20 laps to go, the gap between first and second is a little bit over one second. Kevin Harvick going for second on the 18 car of Kyle Busch has really put a large separation between him and Brad Keselowski. The gap between first and second is now 1.4 seconds. And that's going to be quite hard to make up as we approach 16 laps to go here at Richmond. And Brad Keselowski has dropped off the pace dramatically as he has been stuck behind the lap car of Christopher Bell for the last few laps. The four car of Harvick is now within just seven tenths. Take a look at this. Harvick now tried the outside. Keselowski used the 95 as a pick. But the four car of Harvick has closed right up to the back bumper of Keselowski. Right in front of leader Keselowski is the battling lap cars of Magnuson and Gray Galding. He's going to have to find a way to get around two cars running side by side. Really dove it in onto the 27. Oh, Harvick now going to the outside to attempt to pass on the two. But here comes the 18 car of Kyle Busch. Now Keselowski to the inside of Gray Galding. 
and he has a little bit of clear racetrack. Up in front of him, about one second in front of the two is the 99 car of Chase Briscoe. But take a look at the top three cars all running the inside line. Now just 10 laps to go here at Richmond. The gap between first to second is one-tenth. So now Keselowski has caught the lap car of Chase Briscoe. He's got to try to cut to the bottom before Harvick does. And they both run the bottom through turns three and four. Still stuck behind the lap car of the 99. Harvick tries the outside, but once again, the 18 car of Kyle Busch dives onto the bottom. And Kyle Busch will retake second on the exit of turn two. Still the two stuck behind the 99. And Harvick runs turn three extremely wide, lets the 18 car move into second. Still Keselowski riding right behind the lap car of Chase Briscoe. Now trying the outside. Kyle Busch made contact with the two as Keselowski cuts right back down to the bottom. Kevin Harvick now to the inside of Kyle Busch. Busch retakes second as Keselowski gets to the inside of the 99. Lapping Chase Briscoe, and still a three-man race for the lead with just five to go. Here comes Kyle Busch to the inside of the two-car of Keselowski. Keselowski ran turn three extremely wide, but gets the momentum coming off turn four to clear the 18 into turn one. Drew Herring in the 96, giving race leader Keselowski some room. One of the few lap cars not trying desperately to stay on the lead lap as the 18 and four both run turn three wide. Now here comes Kyle Busch to the inside of Brad Keselowski. Keselowski trying to use the outside line and the lap car of Brandon Jones as a pick. But Kyle Busch going to the inside of the 81 with just two laps to go, he takes the lead. Kevin Harvick will move up into second. And now with Busch leading above Harvick and Keselowski, there is the white flag for Kyle Busch. Kevin Harvick within just a tenth of the 18 car. He's got a shot at it, but I don't think he's going to be able to make up enough ground into turn three. And coming off turn four in a fantastic battle, Kyle Busch will win at Richmond. So Kyle Busch wins his third race of the season above Kevin Harvick. Brad Keselowski, who narrowly missed out on his first win of the season. Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr., Daniel Suarez, Matt Benedetto, Eric Amarola, Cole Custer, and Clint Boyer round out the top ten. And take a look at this with Ryan Blaney's DNF and Kevin Harvick's second place finish. Blaney only has a 37-point lead entering the final race of the regular season next week. Then Clint Boyer still remains in third. Martin Truex Jr. moves up to fourth. Kurt Busch falls to fifth. Logano up to sixth. Kyle Busch up to seventh. Denny Hamlin down to 8th, Matt DiMenedetto stays in ninth, and Daniel Suarez moves up to 10th. Well, in the playoff standings, once again, all 16 eligible drivers have wins, but if anyone different than the current 16 winners wins at Daytona, that will most likely knock Magnussen out of the playoffs via points, because Magnussen is just barely hanging on to that top 30 in points. And the next race is the final race of the regular season at Daytona for the Coke Zero Sugar 400. And you can catch it all right here on the Speed Station.